Open weight title tournament. <laughs> 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 Come on, Chief. I'm finished after this night. I'm finished, man. It's no more smiling for me. It's only vacation waiting for me. <laughs> Guys, this way, please. Over there. It's got to cost you, Joe. One for the boss, guys. One for the boss. All right, guys. Peace out. Thank you so much for attending Glory 17 and Glory Last Man Standing. I'm Stephen Quadros. I'm the fight professor, and I'm here with our champions, our winners, and, of course, Core Hammers, the head of talent operations in Core. How did the event go for you? Well, I think I think we can look back on a, on a great event, a spe a spectacular, uh, exciting. Uh, we are responsible for the matchmaking, and uh, I'm satisfied. So uh, it's difficult to get me satisfied because I saw so many things, and so many fights in my in my career. Uh, well, I think it was a good job. I saw a great fighting spirit of the fighters, and that's always important because we can do whatever we want on paper, but in the ring it uh, has to be done. So I'm proud, uh, proud uh, of our glory fighters, and uh, I'm satisfied. Uh, Stephen. Excellent. Thank you so much. And uh, seated here at the podium with Cor and I are two of our winners. We're going to go first to Gabriel Vargas, and uh, Gabriel gave an outstanding performance in winning our featherweight contender tournament. And Gabriel, assess your performance tonight. Uh, I have no Excuse me, sir. tonight. Uh, I'm uh, happy with the first fight against uh, Sitman Chai. Uh, I work best when I can train specifically for an opponent. And my whole game plan was to go and win the first fight. I trained for him. Uh, everything went beautifully. I felt great. The second fight, I didn't know who I was going to be fighting. So, like any tournament, you just have to wing it. And that's not when I'm at my best. So, I have no complaints. And I'm um, just thrilled and grateful to Gloria. Uh, have this trophy. And that trophy uh, has the brand of the great Ramon Decker. It's a replica uh, from the Ramon Decker trophy that he, that he won when in 1990 he beat the, or defeated the, the Lumpini champion Cherry Vanish. And it was actually the, the start of his career, of the career of Ramon Decker. It was live broadcast for 50 million people. So I think it, uh, to, to honor Ramon and to to always think about him, I think it's good that uh, for the start of a new career for our glory fighters, if you win the contender, then uh, we uh, award you also with the Ramon Decker Trophy. So I was happy to hand uh, this time to uh, Gabriel. Thank you, and also seated at the uh, podium, Andy Risty was successful tonight. He made quick work. Hi, Hallbeck. Andy, how good does it feel? to be back in the winner's circle. Yes, uh, it feels very good and uh, I'm so proud with that uh, win. And uh, I, I, I have to take the belt off or win the belt again. You know, uh, yes, uh, I only focus for the belt now. But uh, this fight has made me very proud. And, uh, yes, thank you. So many great matches in that lightweight division. Robin Van Roosmalen and of course Georgia Petrosian, so many great things. Uh, please, if you have any questions for any of our fighters or for Core Hammers, please step forward now or raise your hand and we'll have the microphone. For Rico. Rico, what's he? Rico, thanks Joe, appreciate that. Yeah, what's up? Congratulations. Uh, uh, thanks. What do you think, um, You were taking a lot of body shots. Yeah. Peter, when, you, when you heard it all, you know, going into the later rounds, you can see the visible damage on the side of you. Yeah, but it's just, uh, it's just the skin, you know. Uh, Daniel's a, a, a explosive, quick kick. You know, it's, it's like a slap, it's like a, like a whip, but it's, it's no internal damage or whatever. It's just, uh, just the skin. And were you concerned going to the judges, or did you feel the outright one? No, definitely not. Definitely not. I, uh, yeah, I was feeling good. I think uh, I was making the, the fight. I was put up, putting up the pace, so I was confident. And you guys hugged at the end of the fight, but can you share any words you guys said to one another? Yeah, I just said, uh, you, know, you know, we're good. I like, are we good? 
Yeah, of course, man. Uh, it's just hyping the fight, and yeah, we haven't seen each other for a while, but you know, everything's good. In the end, we are all athletes, we're all sportsmen, and it is what it is. You think you can return to being training partners again after this? No, no. It's uh, we're both on top, so yeah. Any time in our career, we can fight each other, so it's not possible to train together, but we can just say hi. And, how are you doing? That's it. So things are cool. Yeah, things are cool. Thank you. You, uh, we, how did it kind of take the wind out of your sails hitting that high kick, knocking him down? It, it was kind of shocking to see him get up for us sitting there. But for you, uh, did you think you had him knocked out there? I thought he was out, man. I like, I, I'm surprised he got up. And uh, seeing that he was hurt, I kind of pushed the pace on him, and I thought I could have dropped him. So. Um, I could see my pace dropping a little bit at four and five, uh, but you know when he's hurt like that, my, my killer instinct, you know, takes over, and I wanted to finish that fight in the third round, and because he was rocked pretty bad, and I didn't think he was getting up. So, um, but he was tough. He came back, and to come and have a, a solid four and five round like that uh, speaks a lot for him as a fighter. And how badly were you hurt? I mean, obviously I see the black guy. I know you took a couple big knees. How badly were you hurt? Yeah, the knees were good. He was using his knees. Uh, you know that you can tell that was a strategy. I knew that going into it that he was going to use his knees a lot. But uh, you know, I was just being a fighter. That's what I'm here to do. And you know, there was nothing going to stop me from getting this belt on my waist, no matter what he gave me. So, yeah. And how, how soon to turn around? You want old school? Uh, whenever it happens. Unless I'm going to go back, reassess, get healed up, and I'm ready to go. I still have a lot to learn as a fighter and as an athlete, and uh, I'm just going to keep getting better. And were, and were you concerned when you went to the judges' decision? Um, I, I thought it would have been close. Um, I knew I was pretty confident I won the first three rounds. Uh, so, but I didn't know how the judges saw it. But uh, I knew in my books I won the first three rounds. You, you, you've said it in numerous interviews since you were a kid. You, you've always wanted to have a belt. Uh, your father means a lot to you. Your family means a lot to you. How, how much does it mean to you to win that title in front of your family and your father? Oh, this is amazing, man. Like I have 14 professional fights. And the crazy thing is, before this, I only had 11 amateur fights. So what I'm doing here now is not many people can say that uh, they won a world title with a total of 22 fights. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to make a stand, and I'm here to keep getting better. And uh, you know, keep on to the sport. I love glory, and we're here to, to grow the sport. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. It's a new chapter in my life. Thank you. Uh, I've got a question from Rico. Hey, what? Uh, Over here. <laughs> Joe? What's up, Joe? The first two rounds, you could probably hear Daniel's corner shouting, wait, wait. We were telling Daniel you know, to keep a very low work rate and not really to do anything. Like, yeah. Did you hear that and what did you think when you heard it? Uh, yeah, what did I think? I think, like, okay, no problem. You, you, you can wait. I just score my points and. Yeah, make sure I'm in front of you, you know, in counting the points. Yeah. Just keeping busy, making sure I make points and yeah, he can, he can wait, but it's, yeah, it's not smart. What do you think of that as a tactic for Daniel in that fight over five rounds? Um, yeah, what did I think? You know, he's a, he's a knockout guy, so especially I knew the first two rounds have to watch out, you know. Of course you have to watch out for the, the whole five rounds, but the first two rounds, somebody's fresh, so you gotta watch out for the explosion and everything. But yeah, for my opinion, I won the first two rounds, so I was like, okay, let's pick up the pace from the third to the fifth. That's what we did. So yeah. it was good. And I think uh, you know, obviously after your first fight, there was, there was talk about decisions, statistics, and stuff. Do you feel like tonight was a much more complete win for you? Definitely, definitely. It was a uh, was a good win for me. Uh, I think. I won almost every round, maybe, maybe one round I lost, but for the rest uh, I won every round. So uh, for me and uh, for the judges it was clear, so I hope it's clear for him as well. And last question, um, you know, Errol Zimmerman has been back on a win streak, looks like he's climbing the rankings. Yeah. Is he Zimmerman's next or who do you think is next for you? I don't know, I don't know and I don't care. I'm number one, so let everybody come, you know, uh, I'm here to stay. So. Uh, yeah, we'll see what comes. But first vacation. That's the that's the, that's the first next thing we're gonna do. All right. Thanks. I appreciate it. After him. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Patrick from the MMA podcast. Question for Bazooka Joe. Behind you to your right. All right. 
I've seen a lot of talk on Twitter following the fight. Uh, a lot of people thought that Mark Dubon had potentially done enough to retain his championship uh, with his efforts in the later rounds. Were you surprised at all by that talk? Um, it seemed like the first through third were, were fairly definitive. A couple 10-9s, 10-8 in the, I believe it was the third round you had dropped him with the hard head kick. Uh, any surprise that some people thought Devon had done enough to retain his championship? You know, a lot of times when you watch sports, people only remember the last few rounds. And uh, I know I'm pretty confident I won the first three rounds. And uh, that high kick, uh, you know, was, it was a nice knockdown. And, you know, I, I, and I won the round pretty solid. So um, I'm confident. And people can say it again. You know, you always want to finish the, the fight strong in the eye for the judges. But uh, I'm just glad the judges, you know, really saw the first three rounds and scored them my way. So thank you. Joe, just, some, just another question. When you went back to your corner at the end of the fight, after the five rounds, your body language, uh, and, and you were sh obviously you were very hurt at that point, but your body language, and you were shaking your head a lot, and, and one, one could suspect that you thought you hadn't won the fight. You know, any time I go to a decision, I'm on the set. Even if I dominate, I'm, I'm, I'm a fighter that wants to get a KO. Um, you see it in all my fights, I go to decisions. I'm disappointed because I train for the You're knockout. The I want the knockout, um, so I go for it. And, uh, you know, every decision, I'm upset. So, um, for me, I, I was still confident, and, you know, it was the cut, and, you know, bothered me a little bit. But, uh, you know, I won the fight, and, you know, I was confident that I won the first three rounds, but I wanted a knockout. You know, I envisioned a knockout the whole training camp. So every time I go to a decision, you're going to see me upset. Uh, Luca Rajabi from Sci Fighting. Uh, first, I wanted to offer my congratulations to uh, Joseph Varga for uh, your victory. You contacted me some time ago on Facebook, and I just wanted to say I came and saw you perform and did an excellent job. Very, very good. Very proud of you. And the same for uh, Joe Valentini, you did an excellent job. Autumn Ziemba, I'm sure you know, she's ecstatic about your win. Uh, congratulations to that. You know, some thoughts on, you know, now you guys have the championship, you know, for both of you, what would you say are your next steps? Like, what's the next big challenge? To Fargo or to uh, Joseph? To both. Okay, first Joseph. Well, it's to keep getting better. Um, as an athlete, as a martial artist, uh, you know, you, you, you strive for perfection. So it's to keep getting better, to keep improving, and uh, keep having fun while I'm doing it. You know, and that's what I'm doing right now. So thank you. Um, my challenges and, and goals for the rest of the year will be to move into the, uh, the final and, and win the belt like uh, Joe did and Rico and uh, Artem. And uh, add another championship back to Canada. Well done, Joe. Great job. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, my question is to Andy Ritzy. I've been watching Glory. It's uh, one of the best uh, show right now and uh, just a big trend. And it's amazing how you've been fighting and beating a lot of world champion fighters. Kai Hollenbeck's one of the best fighters, but also you beat a lot of the champions. Uh, when you went into this fight with Kai Hollenbeck, you were able to beat him really fast and the next uh, opponent. Yes, yeah, so my strategy was uh, yes to beat him. It doesn't matter what's happened, and uh, I saw I saw the chance, and I, I did I gave him the, the knockout, and uh, I prepare very hard and prepare very good, and uh, I only go for the win. When you said you saw the chance, did you see him parrying the jab? How did you find the opening for the left hook? Yes, uh, I, I was given the jab first and uh, then I saw that he is take away his hands from his face and after that I gave him a, a pussy cat. Definitely more of a tiger, not a pussy cat. I have a quick question for Jarrell. You know, Jarrell, everything's made of uh, Miracle's left foot, but people don't re really realize that his hands are at an elite level, and he's a, he's a really good boxer. Are you impressed with his hands? 
I mean, him and Dick were all fighters, so I'm trying to say. Um, he said, he come with a couple good shots in there, nothing really hurt me. Um, I blocked all, all his kicks, a couple body shots, and uh, come with a couple of knees that I don't think were low blow. But in the day, man, we um, love some spec, I love the Kirk Murphy. I actually love the guy a lot, to tell the truth. And, um, we're just here just trying to make a name for ourselves. You know what I mean, and that's what we got to talk and we got to build a score. That's how you get paid and you get, get, get to come back. Um, and in the day, man, I mean, for 25 days of this training, I try to go from the angle of boxing to kickboxing. It was a little rough. And um, even though I blocked the shots, it kind of moved me and looked up to the judges. So, you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. I mean, I love Glory. I think they do an awesome job. And they're doing something that a lot of companies are not doing. They're paying fighters and giving them an opportunity. And I, that, that alone, I respect Glory for that. You know what I mean? So, uh, I'm back to boxing, baby. We we'll see what it is. Glory keep doing the big things. Thanks to all the champions here. Wayne Barrett, my boy, did an awesome job. I thought he won the fight. But at uh, the end of the day, got to work hard and come back. Amen. I'd, um, I'd like to ask Wayne Barrett a question, but he's sitting here right next to me, so uh, let's do it like a chat. Um, the fight with Joel Schilling, how did you uh, how did you feel? First of all, it looked like a very nervous beginning, as if there was a lot of tension, because you know, I think you two guys don't really want to lose to each other. You don't want to lose any fight, but you know, you and Joel is a, is a deep rivalry, and uh, it looked like you were both kind of hesitant. Did you feel that? You know, I, I thought he, uh, he had a war with Simon Marcus, and he was pretty battered up. Uh, he was doing a lot more movement in the first than I thought he was. I thought he was just going to try to rush him and clinch, so I thought I was going to have an easy night. But uh, he moved around a lot. He really did. Um, you know, kind of kind of confused me. But, you know, I, I guess, he, you know, he, he, had a, he had a few injuries. But um, I thought it was, it was either close for a third round or I won by one point. But, you know, I left it in the judge's hands, and that was a mistake of mine. And, uh, you know, I promise and I vow that I won't step in the ring again until I know I'm going to knock everybody out. This is your first loss as a pro. You know, you know, four and one. Um, probably not take five and one. I apologize for my important story by knockout. Um, has it sunk in there? Do you think it's something you're going to go home and dwell on, or is it just one of those things? You know, I'm pretty hard on myself. I'm, I'm uh, my biggest critic. You know, when I uh, when I decided to turn pro, I decided to be undefeated. Obviously, there's another plan here for me tonight. Um, the only thing I can do is just play my part, man. You know, kickboxing is trying to make a mark in America. And if I can just play even the smallest role, you know, I don't care what it is, man. Just get me in there. If you guys want to do interviews, if you guys need me to do anything to make the sport bigger, I'm on board, man. You know, I, I'm not as uh, as flamboyant as my boy over here. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I have a sense of humor and I like to smile. You know, when it's time to fight, it's just business. You know what I mean? I get into a different zone. But, you know, I try to put on a show for you guys. I try to do the Superman off the ring. I try to, you know, bounce off the ring. I try to do that little flick kick. You know, I just hope that people see that and, and see that I'm, I'm young, young as a fighter and young as a person, but I'm out there trying new things, you know? Trying to be daring and different. Thanks a lot. Um, <laughs> I have a question for Artem. Congratulations. Um, I just wanted to know which, which which of the three fights that you won you thought was the toughest, and um, how banged up are you right now? Are you injured in any way? Well, you got helped up, so I guess something's up. Каждый бой по-своему был сложный, потому что с кем-то психологически было сложно как на реванш выходить. Кто-то очень опытный из другой категории пришел. И первый бой, ну, это все равно всегда темная лошадка, поэтому я не могу выделить, какой бой сложнее всего, я одинаково сложный. Сейчас у меня очень сильно болят ноги, и я хочу к своей семье. You know, all, all of the fights were uh, really tough, all of the opponents were tough, uh, but, uh, you know, and, and they were tough um, certain, on certain aspects mentally because uh, it was a rematch fight, um, but he would have to say the first fight it was uh, uh, more challenging because um, he wasn't sure how the night is going to go, so there was a lot of pressure on the first fight, so he wanted to for the first fight to go his way. As you can see, um, he says, my legs are hurt really bad and uh, pretty banged up, so I really want to stretch him out and ice him. 
And for Mr. Hemmers, uh, if you could tell us what you're thinking about going forward with the, the middleweight division, uh, what may be next for Rico, what may be next for Andy Risky in the, the lightweight division, you know, just with the winners tonight, and what may be next for them? Well, like Joseph said, I think uh, first they all uh, deserve a, a holiday. Uh, yeah, Andy, uh, without doubt, he wants to go for that title, so uh, I think uh, we will give uh, Andy, uh, when the opportunity is there, then we will give him a title shot. Uh, I think he's one of the guys who deserve it. We have a rule that uh, out of the top four, we can choose and uh, select an, uh, an opponent uh, to, to challenge uh, the champion. So, uh, follow follow the, the Glory website and you will uh, read the news. Uh, Joseph. I think this title was uh, already uh, quick on the line a couple of times, so I don't think in a, in a couple of uh, co upcoming months we're going to have a challenge for this title again. We give uh, Joe his, uh, his piece, his holiday, and uh, that's the same uh, for Rico. So I think we're going to look forward in the coming months for uh, the other uh, weight cup, uh, eight, uh, the other weight divisions. Um, how do you feel about the tournament, the eight men? Is that something you're looking to do with, with another division relatively soon? Well, I was looking at the screen and I think that is, that's exactly what they saw on television and what I saw and I'm very happy uh, uh, about that because we are in Los Angeles, we are in the United States and I, I was always calling uh, non-Americans fighting Americans because we, we were always expecting that the non-Americans were from a higher level. What I saw in the brackets, I saw the American flag coming up to the top and uh, so I think uh, I have to correct that. In the future we, uh, we will speak about international uh, fighters and I think uh, the Americans belong to the highest level uh, of our glory fighters and uh, yeah, proud, uh, proud uh, that, that uh, especially the American fighters uh, did a great job and uh, uh, showed a, a big spectacle and, uh, and a great performance. Got a question for Arthur. I just wanted to ask, you know, uh, the first time you got, or the last time you guys faced each other, you were winning, and then you got caught with something. And I wanted to ask, what were the emotions after after losing, and how did it feel tonight to to beat somebody who, who had beaten you in the past? Uh, so are you talking about Joe? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Естественно, я был расстроен, потому что первый бой, ну, я думал, что я фаворит, я допустил ошибку, очень рано начал думать о своей победе, и Джо использовал и заслуженно победил. Сейчас, мне кажется, реванш это всегда не только победа, это под... победа двойная на два. Это... Сейчас меня просто пере... переполняют эмоции, поэтому я просто опустошен. Даже... У меня их нету, они кончились. И я, я сделал огромную работу, я признаю честно, я очень боялся перед турниром. Прям засыпая каждый день у своих оппонентов. Um, of course, uh, the, the first time they fought, um, I made a mistake. Um, I got too confident and I was already thinking about uh, the fight that I supposedly won, but I didn't win it yet. And I made that mistake and I paid for it. Um, so going into this tournament, um, I potentially knew that I was going to face Joe again and uh, uh, it was a lot of pressure on me. I, I'll be honest, uh, I was very, very nervous uh, before this tournament. There was a lot of pressure on me and um, I had a lot of sleepless nights thinking about uh, the outcome of the tournament. Uh, beating Joe, uh, it's, uh, he experienced so many emotions that he doesn't have any emotions left anymore. Um, I feel empty, um, he says, so, uh, you know, he's ecstatic that he won, but he's just exhausted, exhausted from emotionally and mentally. What were the feelings, uh, was there nervousness right before the fight, or what was he feeling like right before he stepped in there? Подошел так, что для меня это была война, и в каждом бою я был готов умереть. Я выходил каждый бой от этих последних. То есть, либо победа, либо ничего. В принципе, вы видели 
мой девиз, он на шортах. И для меня это была война, я был готов умереть реально. Um, no, not as much uh, uh, right before the the fight. Um, he mentally prepared, um, uh, so he was focused and he went into every fight, uh, basically trying to knock the opponents out or decisively beating them. Um, as you can see, um, um, he had a logo on his shorts uh, saying, um, you know, win or die trying, and that's the logo he fought under. Um, it kind of represents how he, you know, was acting in that tournament. Thanks for a great performance. Thanks. Especially by Shredder. Thank you. This is a question for Core Hammers. Uh, this was a great night of action, great uh, fights, some dramatic knockouts. How do you make glory and kickboxing arise to the level of popularity of MMA? Uh, what is the plan? Will it ever get there? How do you make kickboxing as appealing to the fight fan uh, who, who loves watching uh, MMA combat. Well, first of all, yeah, thank you that you enjoyed uh, our fight and our glory show. I think uh, the MMA in America did already a great job, but because uh, when I hear about MMA fights, most of the fans of MMA fights like uh, the striking parts of the fights. What we are bringing is uh, pure striking. So uh, the more fans are going to watch us, I think we are. Uh, we will grow and grow and grow. We need some time. Of course, we are now uh, two years. We are on this road. Um, so I'm I'm very confident that uh, we will grow very fast. So no doubt about that. So it appears there are no more questions, correct? Anybody else? Last call? Okay, we're going to have a photo session for our champions who remain our world champions. Uh, Joseph Valtellini is here and of course Artem Levin.